Uh, we good to go? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the official press conference. Let me take my mask off. Maybe you'll hear me, hear me better. <laughs> Ahead of the World Athletics Indoor Championships here in Belgrade 2022. We're extremely happy to be here uh, in this magnificent Stark Arena. Uh, it's been a, a long time coming for these World Indoor Championships. Uh, but today's press conference will be split into two parts. And for the first half of the press conference, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, World Athletics President Sebko. The Serbian Athletics Federation President uh, Veselin Jevrosimovic. Serbia's own Ivana Spanovic and Olympic champion Damian Warner of Canada. Um, Seb, I think you know that uh, when I usually hand over to you, so over to you, Seb. No, I'm not going to speak this time. Okay, well, I'll move straight on. <laughs> Lara, thank you. And look, first of all, thank you for being here with us this morning, and particularly the athletes. Um, I know how focused athletes are as they're going into competitions. This is a world championship, so I'm particularly pleased that you've both taken the time and Keely and uh, her colleagues over there have taken the time to be uh, with us this morning. I don't know about you, I'm very excited. Uh, it seems incredible that the last time we had a world indoor championships was back in Birmingham uh, in 2018. We all know why we've had to wait so long for the next edition, and the world has been through some pretty trying times, and it remains a pretty complicated place. And I'm delighted to be here today. I'm delighted that sport can yet again show the healing powers that it does and the ability to bring well over 100 nations together uh, for these championships. I'm also delighted that this is the first time since we were in Doha for the Outdoor World Championships that we actually have a live crowd. Um, for the athletes, I'm sure that will make a huge difference to their performances. Having said that, of course, uh, it hasn't obviously been a, a, a diminishing factor in the way that they have all performed over the last few years. But the intimacy of indoor racing, the intimacy of a world championship, the ability as a World Athletics Federation to be able to do all the things that we are pioneering and doing around our sports presentation uh, and just bringing the crowds and the fans closer to the athletes, and we like to think vice versa, is really important. And, and no better, in a way, exemplified than in a world uh, indoor uh, championships. Let me also say that I'm incredibly grateful to the hard work of the local organizing committee here. I'm delighted to be joined by my good friend Veselin, the president of the Serbian Federation. Uh, it was his ambition many, many years ago to try to persuade the political leadership of Serbia to invest uh, in athletics. He is and was a former uh, pole vaulter uh, of no mean ability. Uh, and he has been very successful in really pioneering uh, and promoting the sport in this country. The investment both indoors and outdoors uh, is extraordinary and I know it won't be long before the Serbian Federation uh, and the government here are knocking on our door for a world championships and that of course uh, we would welcome. Uh, I'm particularly pleased though that the partnerships that have worked so well uh, in the past are working incredibly well here. Uh, this is a part of the world that really does understand athletics, it really does understand the importance of sport in communities and for the next few days, I know that we are going to be, uh, we're going to be blessed with some extraordinary uh, competitions and crucially, some really big head-to-heads. So thank you for being here. Uh, to the athletes again, huge thanks for the time that you've taken out uh, to spend some time this morning promoting our sport, and that's really important. Uh, and to you, Vesa, for your continued support of everything that we're doing in world athletics. 
Um, thank you very much, Seb. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Veselin, who will say a few words on behalf of the local organizing committee in Serbian, and there will be consecutive translation. Dobar dan svima. Kao prvo, ja bih želao da se zahvalim Sebu i Seskoj atletici što su nam ukazali poverenje da organizujemo ovako veliko takmičenje. Inače, Srbija je najmanja zemlja koja je dobila organizaciju svetskog atletskog prvenstva u dvorani. Kao što vidite, arena je spremna. Ovde smo uradili jedan pravi inženjerski poduhvat. Ce ovaj pot smo morali da dižemo za četiri metra. Konstrukcija je teška preko 200 tona. Ugrađeno je preko 50.000 šrafova. To samo govori o složenosti celog poduhvata. Arena je spremna. Znači, mi smo spremni da sutra ovde ugostimo više od 680 atletičara koji će se boriti za titulu najboljeg na svetu. Ne mogu da završim ovaj govor da se ne zahvalim onima koji su najviše pomogli da realizujemo ovako veliki projekat. Zahvaljujem se predsedniku Republike Srbije Aleksandru Vučiću, zahvaljujem se vladi Republike Srbije, gradu Beogradu, Ministarstvu za omladinu i sport, zahvaljujem se Olimpijskom komitetu kao i sponsorima kompaniji Dunav, Comtrade, Voda Voda i Telekom Srbije. Hvala vam puno. First of all, I have to thank my dear friend Seb and the World Athletics for giving us the trust to organize the World Championships. This is one of the biggest sporting events in the world. I have to say at the beginning that the arena is completely ready. Uh, we have um, done this amazing engineering feature in a very short period of time. We have uh, used more than 200 tons of uh, different equipment. 50,000 bolts were used to set up everything so that it will work perfectly. So we are basically ready to start the competition tomorrow with over 680 athletes from all over the world who will be competing for the highest honors in the athletics for the world titles. Uh, in conclusion, I also have to thank uh, a number of people and institutions. First of all, the President of Serbia, Mr. Aleksandar Vucic, uh, the Government of Republic of Serbia, the City of Belgrade, uh, the Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports of Serbia, the Olympic Committee of Serbia, and our sponsors, companies Dunav, Comtrade, Voda Voda and Telecom Serbia. Thank you very much, Vesa, for hosting us here. Um, Ivana, as Veselin was saying, uh, it's uh, extremely important for the Serbian Federation to, to host these championships, but for you in particular, it must be extremely exciting to compete here. Um, most of us here probably remember fondly uh, when you competed in 2017 at the European Indoor Championships here in Belgrade. You won a fantastic 724. Have you been thinking about that moment yourself uh, these last few days, and how much would you like history to repeat itself? Yeah, um, I think the microphone will switch on automatically. It, yes. Is it okay? You hear me? Okay. So, hello everybody. I'm really happy to see you in this number. So yeah, I'm thinking about that number since 2017, not just this couple of uh, days before the championship. Uh, I'm really happy that I will defending my world indoor title in front of my people in and home crowd. I think that I am capable of producing similar jumps. Uh, I don't want to make bigger announcements, but I am uh, ready. I'm really happy and of course I want to use all that energy and just repeat or produce even better. And uh, as you say, you're here as the uh, defending world indoor champion. And you've been a world indoor champion for four years rather than two years because of the circumstances. How, if, uh, have things changed in the last four years for you? Are you the same athlete? Are you more experienced? Are you more focused? A little bit of everything. Um, I wanted to maybe, I was thinking if I, if I did manage what I wanted to in Tokyo last year. Last summer I wanted to end my career as Olympic champion, but things changed. <laughs> so, uh, um, I'm not 26, 27 anymore, now I'm 31, so uh, 
a lot of things changed in a couple of years, but yeah, I'm still in sport. I feel like I did not achieve my maximum, so that's the only reason why I'm still here. And of course, uh, everything I do in this sport is because of the love, and uh, I don't want to to end it uh, by missing any any kind of feeling or whatever. Um, thank you, Ivana. Uh, Damien, you you've also coming off a amazing uh, summer season in 2021. Um, you won in Goetzes, you won the Olympic Games, you were the fourth man ever to break 9,000 points, Olympic record, I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, but you've yet to compete in a full heptathlon this winter. Uh, can we anticipate that you are still in the shape of your life? And, um, I hope so. Yeah? <laughs> um, yeah, so last year was obviously very good for me, and. Uh, we don't necessarily know where we're at in training right now, but based off what I've seen so far, I think I'm in pretty good shape. So uh, after a season that's successful, you always want to build on that. And I think that I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I think I'm ready to go. And uh, it's really cool when we come here and we get to see this awesome setup, uh, see the competitors, and some excitement starts to happen. So uh, I think tomorrow, once that gun goes off, we'll be, uh, we'll be happy. And I believe it's safe to say that um, going into the Tokyo Olympic Games, you haven't had the best of uh, preparations. I mean, COVID restrictions meant that you had to adapt to small training venues and facilities. Um, and yet you've managed you know, to break multiple personal bests. Is this something that you've learned from the circumstances last year that you'd be bringing forward into your training? Yeah, I think it's just something that I've learned throughout my whole career. Uh, I'm 32 now, so I'm one of the old guys here. It kind of feels weird. but. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way. I've had some success, I've had some failure. Um, in my world championships indoors in 2018, it wasn't so successful. I finished second by five points, so that's still eating at me. So it'd be really awesome to go into this competition and kind of uh, amend that, I guess. Um, but I'm looking forward to this competition. I think that uh, it's gonna be a good one. There's some good athletes in the field. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun to watch. Uh, it's funny you should mention 2018, cause uh, um, back then I think Kevin won. And before that, Ashton won three consecutive times. And I'm sure, you know, Kevin's not here because he can't compete, but both Kevin and Ashton will be cheering for you. H how much would it mean for you to actually add your name to the list of world indoor champions? I mean, you can go down the list and look at all the athletes that have won in the past. Uh, Ashton and Kevin, obviously, guys that have, I've competed against. So uh, any time that you can go to a world championships or an Olympics where there's going to be top competitors, uh, it always means a lot to win. Uh, and there's some top competitors in this field, and if I'm able to stand on top of the podium at the end of it, uh, once my career's over, hopefully long time down the road, uh, I'll be able to look back and I'll be uh, happy about that. Um, I mean, I could spend hours asking questions, but I think it's time for any questions from the floor. So if anybody has a question from any, for any of our guests, we have microphones on each side of uh, the setup. Uh, please raise your hand and move to either table if you have a question. Now is your time. Yes, Cahal, I think you can move to this side, which is closer to you. And can you please specify who you're addressing your question to? No, this one, this one. <laughs> uh, it's a question for Damien. I'm sure you saw Garrett Scantling's mark at US Championships. Just wondering what you thought of that performance and looking to this weekend, what you think it's going to take to win gold, I guess, against him and everyone else. I'm a huge fan of track and field, so I'm always following along what my competitors are doing. So uh, I've seen Kevin's season. Obviously, Garrett just had a tremendous performance, and uh, Simon's performing really well in the long jump. So uh, I know all those guys are eager to go out there and perform really well, and everybody wants to be able to stand on top of the podium. So it's going to take a pretty big performance. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but uh, just as I did in Tokyo, I have to go out there and execute each event, take it one event at a time. Uh, and then hopefully after the 1,000, uh, there's enough to be able to stand on top. So uh, you never know, but it'll be exciting to watch. Um, thank you, Damien. We have another question from this side. Can we turn the microphone on on the other side, please? There thank we go. You. I think I've pressed the button. <laughs> question for Seb. Um, we've seen demonstrations on the streets of Belgrade in support of Russia's invasion of Ukraine over the past couple of weeks. How confident are you that we're not going to see similar scenes here inside the arena? And also, is there support in place for the six Ukrainian athletes who are here to compete? And, and if so, what, what is that support in place for them? There is uh, there's certainly support 
for Ukrainian athletes, but there is support for all our athletes here. That's the way we operate. Um, look, the stadium, this is track and field, and track and field has historically always been a sport that has understood and accepted the fragilities of the political landscape, but has normally come together in a very cohesive and collective way. So I'm not expecting any issues in the stadium. Uh, we have all the right processes and systems in place, which you will understand I'm not going to sit and discuss uh, uh, at a press conference. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, these are world championships and sport will win through. Thank you, Seb. Do we have any other questions? Oh, sure, Vesa. I have just to... One comment from Vesa. Um, excuse me? Lady. Uh, mi takođe imamo i demonstracije protiv rata u, u protiv rata u Ukrajini tako da samo bi to isto dodao. I would only I'd like to add one thing because media might not know it. We also had demonstrations against the war in Ukraine at the same time as the ones that you mentioned before. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions? I just want to stress, yes, Jess, that um, there will be no time for one-on-one, -on -one, so now is your time if you have any questions for any of our guests. Uh, Jess, I think you need to turn your microphone on. Yes. Okay. Um, Ivana, I just wondered if I could ask about the strength. We can't oh, hear you. The strength in the long jump and the competition that you'll face here. Um, you're the world leader among the entries, but how are you feeling about your competition and what you might be able to produce being pushed to some great performances? Well, one of my main competitor, Mihambos, is not here. I'm really unpleased that she she pulled off uh, for this uh, indoor championship. But uh, I love I love strong competitions because those are the moments when you can produce even better results. So uh, uh, I will, of course, jump with. Um, Kadi Sagnia, Lorraine Eugene, they, they are the girls who are uh, one of the best so far in this indoor season. So uh, we will see. I'm, I'm always saying that I'm competing only against myself because um, I know how, how, how much I can in, in every single moment. So I'm really looking forward to defend my title. That is the main goal. And of course, I have to, to get close to that 7.24 I left in 2017. Thank you, Ivana. Do we have any more questions for anyone, from anyone? Yes, sir? Hello, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, may I switch to Serbian? Because I'm from Serbian National Television. Welcome sure. to Belgrade. Apologize yes. to my colleagues. Ivana, možeš li da odgovoriš na ista pitanja koja ti je postavila koleginica u vezi sa tvojim očekivanjima i prisećanjima na 2017. i na taj sjajan rezultat? Koji su tvoji dometi i šta želiš da ostvariš pred punom arenom? Thank you. The question is just to reiterate uh, the previous question that she already answered in English so that the Serbian media could actually use the sound bites in Serbian. Biću, da, biću kratka, ovaj, što sažetija moguće. Pa, u principu, ja sam, mislim, ovdje ću se pojaviti u nedelju na boravištu kao a, vodeći i kao svetski prvok iz 2019. iz Birmingena. Tako da, apsolutno mi je cilj, naravno, da odbornim tu, tu titulu i to je prvi prioritet. Drugi prioritet da s onom rezultatu, ličnom rekordu od 7.24 približim što više i naravno, uh, ne bih previše ništa ni da najavljujem. Apsolutno je jasno da se neću na takmičenju pojaviti samo da bih skakala, već da bih odbranila tu titulu i to je nešto što mogu unapred da, da kažem. A sve ono za šta sam spremna i koliko sam spremna uh, želim eto da ostavim uh, i da iskoristim u nedelju pred domaćom publikom i atmosferu ka kako mislim da će stvarno biti uh, do sada neviđen i sigurno da, da, da ćemo zaseniti ceo onaj utisak iz 2017. godine. Thank you, Ivana. Um, yes, we have a question from this young lady over here. It's 
on. It's on. Yeah, so both for Ivana and Damien, if there is one athlete you would wish to go in head to head against, either competing now or competed before and is old enough to retire now, who would you pick? That's a tough question. I mean, in the decathlon, the, the history is so deep. Um, when, I, when I first started training for the decathlon, uh, I didn't really know what the decathlon was, so I started going on YouTube to look at who the top guys were, and uh, that was back in 2010, and that was when Brian Clay was at his, his highest. He was the Olympic champion in 2008, so I always wanted to compete against him, uh, so he's somebody that I'd probably go back and compete against, some, somebody that I looked up to, and I'd try to learn as much as I can from from him, but then there's Ashton and Kevin and all these different guys, so it, it's really tough for me to choose. Daley Thompson, obviously, and Dan O'Brien, it's, it's tough to pick. I'd put all the names in a hat and just pick out one and I'd just be a, a happy camper. I, I cannot choose just only, only one athlete, so it's, it's hard to say. Do we have any more questions? If we don't, we are going to wrap up this first half of the press conference. Please do not move because we have three fantastic athletes coming up next. And we're going to take this opportunity for a group photograph for the photographer. So we're going to gather in the middle. Thank you very much, Vesa. Thank you, Ivana. We can clap. No, no clap. <laughs> yes. Facciamo la foto con loro. With Thanks. Yeah. Keely, you can go in this. Yeah. Because they're leaving. I try. And you wanna go yeah. in the middle? Yeah. Is that okay? Kelly, can you sit over here, please? We have to clean it, and we have to change the lighting. Um, Vesta, you forgot your accreditation. So we we're almost ready for the second half of the press conference. Protocol, COVID protocol rules. We have to disinfect everything, Marcel. Steep boys to the quad. Keely in the middle. Um, we're all good. Thank you very much for taking the time to come here. Uh, this uh, starts the second half of the press conference. And please join me in welcoming here Marcel Jacobs of Italy, uh, double Olympic champion from Tokyo, uh, Keely Hodgkinson of uh, Great Britain, uh, silver medalist in Tokyo and winner of the Diamond League last year, and Ryan Krauser, Olympic champion, world record holder, shot putter, amazing performer. Uh, Marcel, if you will allow me, I will start with you. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know you've been competing quite a lot 
this winter, and you've actually been winning a lot this winter. Uh, the only little hiccup maybe is the false start in Belgrade last week. Um, how have you been processing that, and can you uh, turn the table tables around and prove that it was just only a, a hiccup? Now, do you need me to translate this, or it's okay? It's, o it's okay? Yes. <laughs> Uh, sì, è un piacere essere qui oggi. È, è bello perché mi ricordo quando vedevo gli altri atleti che erano seduti e facevano le press conference, quindi essere qui mi rende molto orgoglioso. È stato un lungo percorso, mi ricordo che l'ultima volta che ho gareggiato qui è stato nel 2017 ai campionati europei, in cui non erano... arrivavo qui da favorito e sono uscito in qualificazione nel salto in lungo. Era stato un periodo un po' difficile della mia vita, della mia carriera sportiva. Poi degli infortuni ho deciso di farmi cambiare specialità e per fortuna sono arrivati questi infortuni e mi hanno permesso poi di conquistare queste due medaglie d'oro alle Olimpiadi. È stata una prima parte di stagione molto interessante, sono riuscito a ritrovare degli ottimi, delle ottime sensazioni, anche se non sono riuscito a sfruttare al meglio le mie potenzialità, però credo che tutto quello che è successo, i piccoli intoppi che ci sono stati durante questa prima parte di stagione indoor siano serviti per arrivare qui nel migliore dei modi, eh, compresa quella falsa partenza che credo che sia stata fondamentale perché sono dell'idea che è meglio fare che succeda tutto prima che nel momento che più conta, quindi sono pronto e non vedo l'ora di scendere in pista. Okay, let me go from the beginning. Um, it's a, a real pleasure for me to be here today amongst all of these fantastic athletes. In fact, I remember when I used to watch the press conferences, press conferences and not being invited, so I'm happy that I have been invited now, turning the tables around. Uh, it has been a very long time coming for me. I remember being here in Belgrade um, at the European Indoor Championships in 2017. It's not the best of my memories because I was among the favorites to win in the long jump competition back then, and I bowed out in the qualification round. It was a very, very difficult time for me, uh, both in my personal life and in my sporting career. And after that, I uh, got injured several times. And because of that injury, I decided to change my focus from the long jump to the sprint. And in fact, uh, I am thankful for that injury because uh, that is the reason why I am now a double Olympic champion in the 100 and the 4 by one So everything happens for a reason. As far as this season is concerned, uh, the first half of the season has been very good. I'm happy, I'm very satisfied, I've been feeling well, I've had good sensations on the track, although I know I'm not yet at my best. Uh, in a way, I'm happy about the false start in uh, Belgrade last week because I believe that it's best that it happened then and not this week. And it's uh, made me even more focused on uh, the weekend ahead. Uh, Marcel, it's, uh, it's safe to say that since your uh, two Olympic gold medals uh, in Tokyo uh, last summer, your world has completely changed. I mean, you've been invited by the Italian president, you've been on TV shows, uh, magazine covers, Formula One Grand Prix, etc., etc. How have you managed to remain grounded, grounded and kept your focus and motivation uh, to do even better? Io credo di non, essere mai, eh, di non essermi mai staccato con i piedi da terra. Quelle due medaglie che io ho conquistato la scorsa, la scorsa stagione sono state fondamentali per una crescita personale, ma questo non mi, ha, mi ha dato motivazione di non stare più con i piedi per terra, ma anzi mi ha dato ancora più consistenza e voglia di dimostrare di poter fare ancora di più. Eh, non agli altri, ma a me stesso. Erano delle sfide che mi ero messo per me, 
e, e quindi è stato fondamentale riuscire a rimanere coi piedi per terra anche dopo queste due medaglie olimpiche. Mi sono goduto tutti quei momenti che, che forse prima non potevo, a cui non potevo partecipare. Eh, la Formula 1 per esempio era, è una delle mie più grandi passioni, quindi riuscire a simulare una partenza di fronte a tutte le auto prima che partisse la gara è stato un qualcosa di, di incredibile, come la visita al Presidente, è stato veramente tutto molto bello, ma nonostante questo io... Sono sempre rimasto focalizzato su quello che volevo da, dalla mia carriera, dalla mia prossima stagione che era questa. Eh, ci sono tanti impegni, ci sono appunto questi campionati del mondo, campionati del mondo all'aperto e i campionati europei. Quindi eh, io ho staccato subito dopo Tokyo per ricominciare ad allenarmi prima degli altri e, e cominciare a fare una stagione da sia dalle indoor che poi verso le outdoor. Sapevo che queste indoor erano fondamentali perché mi servivano per incrementare quella prima parte di gara che, in cui perdo di più rispetto agli altri, però sono molto contento di essere rimasto coi piedi per terra e di essere rimasto focalizzato su quello che ancora devo fare. Um, so Marcel says that in fact he's always remained uh, grounded, he's never left the ground in his own words. Uh, what happened last year winning the two Olympic medals was very important for his own development and his own growth, uh, but he has never lost uh, the focus. He was very proud that he was able to achieve those medals because he wanted to prove himself but not to prove others. He wanted to prove to himself that he was capable of achieving what he did achieve. Uh, yes, uh, I've taken my time off and I've enjoyed every single moment. Uh, the Formula One in particular is one of my uh, greatest passions and to be able to be on the grid uh, ahead of all of those Formula One cars was an unbelievable feeling. Uh, meeting the president, having so many opportunities that I would not have had, I'm conscious of that, was very beautiful. Uh, however, I am very uh, focused on my career. I have decided to cut my outdoor career short last summer because I have a very long career, uh, sorry, season uh, um, this year. Uh, world indoors is very important, world outdoors is very important, and European outdoors is also very important. So I have decided to start training earlier than everyone else, so I, was, so I would be able to focus on all my uh, goals this year. And I am very proud that I have remained grounded and focused. Uh, grazie, Marcel, thank you very much. Um, Kili, um, you've also had a breakthrough year last year. I mean, uh, one of the uh, arguably uh, most exciting races was the women's 800 at the Tokyo Olympic game and the head-to-head -head between you and Athing Mo. And at the time, neither of you was over 20, so uh, still so very young. Um, how have you experienced um, the um, post-Olympic, uh, going back to training, going back to focus, and uh, performing as well as you have uh, this indoor with already a national indoor record. Is this on? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think definitely, I think after Tokyo, because for me, I was still competing, so my next focus was going to Eugene, getting ready for the Diamond Leagues. So I was fine, and then I think maybe mid-winter, I started to process everything that happened in the year, because it was, it was a whirlwind for me. It was just one thing to another. And being British, obviously, I had the European indoors last year as well and, and everything like that. But um, I really enjoyed it. And I think, for me, it was more about managing my time. And my number one priority is always going to be training because that's what gets me the results and puts me in the position that I am. Um, but yeah, it's been, an, it's been an experience. It's been an interesting ride. But I managed to, with my team, we've tackled all that down. We've minimized noise and we've just focused on what's important. And uh, yeah, that's competing and coming to competitions like this and putting on a show. And you, you say you had a busy year last year, but what about this year? I mean, you have World Indoors, World Outdoors, Commonwealth Games, European Championships. Um, are you going to target all of these goals and how, how are you going to manage your season? Um, I think it's a new challenge for all of us, especially my, my team and everyone who's British, because we've got all four championships. Um, so I think nobody really knows how it's going to go down. I think it's definitely physically possible to do all four. Mentally, we'll see, because I think, you know, championship competitions, there's so much adrenaline, so much emotion. Um, it's, quite, it's quite tiring. So um, my number one priority in the outdoor season is definitely Worlds and Commonwealths, uh, with it being a home games. And uh, for the Europeans, I'd like to be there, but well, we'll just see how my body is. And uh, 
we going back to Belgrade, we're very much excited to watching you compete uh, at the 800, but also in the 4x4. <laughs> so how excited are you about that race? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, hopefully the girls get us through to the final and hopefully the boss lets them run in the final. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. It's an hour and a half, I think, between the 800 and the, and the 400. Uh, but I, I can do that. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, and hopefully me and my team, you can pull through a medal for Great Britain. It should be really good fun. Well, good luck for that. Thank you very much. Ryan, over to you. As I mentioned before, you're the Olympic champion, uh, world record holder, and yet you've never competed at World Indoors for one reason or another. Um, it has never happened before. Uh, are you excited about the opportunity that Belgrade represents? I am. I'm, I unfortunately have not done a World Indoors, and I've wanted to since 2016. It just hasn't been in the cards for me. And so I'm excited to be here. I do really enjoy competing indoors because it's just one less variable to worry about, and I'm very analytical when it comes to my training and performing and so I love competing indoors and I'm excited to be here and I, I do love Belgrade I was fortunate enough to do a street shot here in the city square uh, promoting the world championships in 2020 um, and I threw well at that competition and I, I love the city of Belgrade it has so much history here uh, at the confluence of the two rivers it's it's really a, a, a city that I look forward forward to coming back to and if there is one competition that I think no one is ever going to forget, it's the shot put final in Doha. I mean, it had everything. Drama, excitement, uh, power, depth, you know, a cliffhanger finale. Do you think we can expect this and more here or maybe in Oregon this summer? Yeah, I will do my best. I can't, uh, I can't speak to the other guys, but I've, I will do my best and uh, yeah, Doha was such a fantastic competition. Three throwers within one centimeter, all of the top four over the championship record. Um, I don't know if we'll see that again. I almost hope that we don't, uh, <laughs> for my sake. But uh, no, we have a, the shot put is such a deep event right now and there's so much talent and we're, we have a very full field. We're missing Joe Kovacs, uh, but short of that, we have all of the big names here. So I'm excited. I feel like I'm in, in good shape and yeah, I want to get out there and if, shoot, if anyone can touch 2290, that'll be an indoor world record, so that'd be pretty good. And another thing that I, I believe um, we're all excited about is coming to the U.S. for the World Championships uh, uh, in July. Um, it's going to be the first time for outdoors uh, in the U.S. Um, how big of a difference do you think the World Championships can make uh, to the popularity of athletics in the United States? Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the future of track and field in the U.S. Uh, it's such a, such a large market and such a deep sports market. And so the first World Championships on American soil is, is a huge opportunity to bring attention uh, from a country that's extremely passionate about sports, not necessarily uh, in track and field. So I, I'm really excited about the attention it will bring uh, both with, with World Championships and I think especially looking forward to LA in 2028 uh, is, is a big one. And so I'm, I'm really excited and Team USA has, has such a deep and talented team. So I, I'm excited for us uh, to get to compete without a six or nine hour travel change. So uh, I think it'll, I'm excited to, to see a fantastic competition and the venue there at the new Hayward Field is, is truly state of the art. It's, it's one of the best track and field facilities in the whole world. So I'm really excited to showcase for what is almost a hometown venue for me um, and, and bring all of the world's best to, to the United States. Well, we're looking forward to it as well. Um, do we have any questions from anyone in the arena? Yes, Benjamin. You have to turn the microphone on. Yes, thank you. There we go. <laughs> um, so this is for all three of you. Um, I know a lot of athletes always say that they don't like to focus on their opponents and they focus on themselves, but if you had to say who your main rivals were here in Belgrade and also in Oregon, who would they be? Um, Ryan, do you want to start? So I can start. Um, yeah, so we have pretty much everyone in the world uh, here except for Joe Kovacs, and Joe is arguably the most decorated shot putter, um, along with, with myself, of the past four or five years. And so Joe will definitely be a factor. He has the auto bid for, for world championships. And um, in this competition tomorrow, it's 
my fellow American, Josh Awatunde, uh, Darlin Romani is, is looking to be in good form, Tom Walsh, a number of Europeans as well. Shot put, I believe we have five, six, seven guys over 2180 now. And so um, the Europeans have been throwing extremely well in the last two, three weeks. So I think it'll be a, a very deep competition. Uh, it's hard to really focus on any single person. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Jamaican, Natoya Ghoul. Um, I got on with so well, but she's beating me on head-to-heads with the amount of times we've raced each other, so it'd be nice to get one up. I do a speciality in which wins who wins less, especially in 60 meters. I think the favorite number one, who plays also in a game all his own, is certainly Christian Coleman. Sarà sicuro l'uomo da battere e io cercherò di stargli il più vicino possibile e, e mettere magari la testa davanti. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I uh, compete in an event where the one who wins is the one who makes less mistakes, especially in the 60 meters. Uh, as far as Belgrade is concerned, obviously uh, Christian Coleman will be uh, the man to beat and I will try and stay as close as possible to him and maybe dip my head ahead of him. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, yes, we'll take this gentleman and then. Is that Phil? Hi, Phil. Um, Stuart from, from England for Keeley. Um, having watched you in Birmingham for the last two weekends, could you just tell me in what way do you run differently if it's indoor compared to an outdoor 800? I think is this on? Yeah, you can hear me. Um, indoors, uh, I think for me, I do find indoors a little bit harder because they're tight bends. And I think I'm an athlete that maybe strives off having the, the long 100 meters down the back straight. Um, but I think for me, running indoors is kind of just going for it because it can get messy, it can get chaotic. You don't want anyone on your toes, you don't want to chip anyone up, and you don't want to get DQ'd. So I think it's just about staying um, as least messy as possible um, and just trying to stay in your own lane and not let anyone get in your way. Thank you, Keely. Um, another question, yes? Can you, yes, sure. Hi, it's for Marcel. Marcel, uh, last year you took down the European 100 meters record outdoors. 642 is the current European record indoors. Has that figured in your thinking at all this winter? And are you thinking about it at all here, regardless of Christian Coleman and dipping your head? Sì, è vero, ho fatto il record europeo nei 100 metri due volte. E quello dei 60 metri forse credo che per le mie caratteristiche è un po' più, più difficile, ma credo che nulla sia impossibile. Credo che con il duro lavoro e col bel lavoro che abbiamo fatto quest'inverno e un grande stimolo come quello che può essere appunto di grandi avversari come ci saranno qui, si possa riuscire ad avvicinare quel tempo. Eh, ovviamente io sabato cercherò di correre per la posizione, per cercare di fare il meglio possibile, non correre col cronometro in testa, perché è quello che ho fatto in tutta questa prima parte di stagione e non mi ha mai permesso di essere sciolto al 100%, quindi sabato ci giocheremo il tutto per tutto, ma credo di avere magari altre stagioni per poter cercare di avvicinare questo, questo record. Uh, yes, indeed. Last year I set the 100 meter European record uh, twice, in fact. Uh, however, as far as the 60 meters is concerned, I think it's a little harder for me uh, for the way I run. Uh, but nothing is impossible. Um, uh, with the hard work that I've put in, uh, in training, uh, with the competition from other sprinters here, uh, nothing is impossible. However, I will not run for the record. Uh, here in Belgrade, I will run for a position. Uh, I have been running for time uh, all winter, uh, and it's actually made me a little bit tense. So uh, this time around, I'm going to run as relaxed as possible and not think about the time. However, I have many seasons ahead of me to be thinking about that mark. Um, any other questions? Anyone? Yes, sure. Hello, uh, question for Ryan. I mean, first of all, you are one of the legends in your competition, shot put and everything, but I wanted to ask you about our young athlete. We have Armin Sinančević. You competed against him. Unfortunately, he's not going to be here because of an injury. But I want to ask you, what do you think about him and his abilities and how far do you think he can come in this sport? Yeah, so I actually talked to Armin yesterday and uh, I was sad to hear 
that he will not be competing uh, with, with his injury, uh, especially because looking at last year, towards the end of the European season, uh, he really came into his own around the Diamond League final. And he's, he's a big, strong kid and very talented. And, and technically, um, he does a lot of thing, things very well. And you've seen a lot of the Europeans really starting to develop the rotational technique. And he's, he's one of the younger generations uh, that I think he has a, a ton of upside. And I think in a year or two, he could be a, a consistent 22 meter thrower, which by any standard uh, is, is very, very good. So I, I think he has a lot of upside. And among the up and coming athletes, I would rank him uh, as, as one of the, the top up and coming young shot putters. Thank you, Ryan. Do we have any more questions? Yes, please, Cahal. Uh, it's a question for Lamont, Marcel. Um, I watched a video during the week of you training, and it was a side-by-side -side of you training a few years ago, and you training, I think, this year, and your technique looked completely different between the two. Can you just tell us, when you made the move from long jump to sprinting, what exactly did you do and your coach do with your technique, and what changes did you make? Beh, la differenza tra la tecnica del salto in lungo e della velocità eh, è differente. Sicuramente per saltare in lungo bisogna correre veloci e bisogna correre bene. Eh, quello che a noi mancava era appunto la prima parte di gara, ovvero la partenza dai blocchi. Eh, due anni fa correvo veramente in modo completamente diverso perché seguivamo un po' quello che erano la storia, la tecnica che tutti utilizzavano eh, in Italia per, per poter correre. Eh, però vedevamo che erano più le volte che la partenza non era giusta o che io sbagliavo rispetto a quelle che, che uscivano bene. Da lì abbiamo capito che forse bisognava adattare le partenze alle mie caratteristiche. Quindi cercare di trovare una partenza che fosse più nelle mie capacità, nelle mie caratteristiche e sfruttare quello. E quello che siamo riusciti a fare che ha portato a una netta differenza, si è visto da una stagione all'altra, solo nei 60 metri, ad avere guadagnato 15 centesimi eh, nella gara, nella, in una gara corta così. Quindi questo credo che sia stato fondamentale, riuscire ad adattare eh, le mie caratteristiche alla partenza. Um. Yes, um, the technique is very different uh, between a long jump sprint and a sprint sprint. Uh, a long jumper has to run fast and he has to run well, but it's got nothing to do with the way sprinters do run. Um, the main difference is uh, uh, in the first half of my race and specifically the way I use the blocks and the way I start. Uh, two years ago, uh, when we moved to the sprints, we wanted to uh, look at the traditional way of starting and we were looking at the Italian technique and historical ways of starting but we identified that uh, fact that we were making too many mistakes and it, it didn't work for me so we changed our mindset and we decided to go the other way around and instead of copying a technique that was already existing adapting the new starting technique to my body type and my strengths. Um, I think we've managed to do that pretty well. Uh, and in one season, I've improved by 15 hundreds of a second. So um, changing the mindset and adapting the start to my body type has been the key change in my um, routine. Correct? Thank you. <laughs> Crystal? Yes. So we heard uh, that uh, Marcel picked up after his injury and managed to make it to the Olympics and win Olympic gold medals. What about you, Keely and Ryan? Ryan was Doha, like, uh, you know, a slap on the face to actually come back and break the world records and pick up. And Keely, what's, do you have similar experiencing experiences that you went low and then after that you picked yes. up? and? the competition yeah so uh, for me I, I wouldn't I was really pleased with Doha um, it was just an honor to be in the greatest shot put competition of all time and in the final round I threw a massive lifetime best unfortunately it was one centimeter less of, of what I would have really liked to it have been but um, I was consistent all competition I and I threw a lifetime best when it counted so I could never really be upset with that and for me um, I would say the, the biggest that has led me to kind of having a breakthrough season was really 
uh, with with the pandemic and the whole change in in everything. I went from training at the Olympic Training Center uh, and having fantastic facilities to training at an elementary school and uh, lifting in in a garage gym. And so, uh, on the surface, it was it was very difficult, but it really made me condense my training down uh, to doing the best with what I had available. And so it let me lay a foundation of an off-season training where usually I start in September, uh, the end of September, and I train until January, and then season kind of starts to pick up again. And so with that, um, we really just committed. I sat down uh, with with my training partners and the kids that I coach and said, uh, we're going to commit like, and this was in March, we're going to commit like we'll have a championship style meet in September uh, because everything else up to that point had been canceled and if we get to compete that'll be fantastic but if not we'll have laid an excellent foundation for the 2021 Olympics which were just postponed at that point point. and so um, kind of taking the difficulties of a pandemic and a canceled season and using it to build a training base and use it as an opportunity that had I'd never had up to that point in my career and most likely hopefully we'll never have again um, kind of gave me the opportunity to to train and spend more time in the weight room and really break down and change my technique. There was a couple technical issues that I'd struggled without through without throughout my whole pro career, and so I really figured those out uh, with having seven, six, seven months of uninterrupted uh, training. And as an American, we're traveling all around the world, uh, and that time on the road does take its toll. So it was nice to to stay home and really lock in on training at that point. It was similar with like the pandemic. Um, I remember feeling really demotivated and really struggling to just walk out the door and do a run um, because everything was being cancelled. But also the pandemic for me was like a blessing and a curse because the Olympics being postponed, there was no way I'd have been there in 2020. So it opened that door of, I got a silver medal last year, so it was oh my, I was almost happy that it was 2021. But in terms of 2020, I remember really struggling with training. And for me, it was going back to basics, just finding that passion that you have for it when you're younger and um, just breaking that down and building up for there and kind of in the back of my head it was just knowing everything that I'm doing this year in 2020 will benefit me next year um, it was mentally quite hard at the time but obviously came out the other side really great but yeah that was probably my challenge over the last couple of years um, thank you Kelly. thank you Reina I think we have time for one very last question if there is one and if there isn't one last chance okay well i'm going to thank you all uh individually for taking the time to be here uh, I, I know how important time is ahead of a competition like this so thank you again and best of luck at, at the weekend thank you very much thank you everyone for attending <laughs>